Hi, I'm Matt Ambrose with the Defense Acquisition University. There's often confusion about what the parts of a life cycle cost are, so I'd like to take you through a little diagram here which lays out the composition of a system's life cycle costs and each part of that and the cost types that we have in a system's total life cycle cost. So let's start with development costs. The cost to develop a system are mostly, if not all, one appropriation, that's Research Development Test and Evaluation, or RDT&E, and that's everything that we pay to design, develop, and test uh, our systems. So that's, that's the appropriation that we use for that, and those are referred to as development costs. Now we also have cost to produce a system, and those come in some different categories here. But each of these here is one appropriation also, and that is procurement. That's that what's in yellow here. So everything here would be in the procurement appropriation. So the total procurement cost, we can break up into some different categories here. The flyaway cost over here is just the cost of the prime mission equipment. That's that aircraft just by itself sitting there on the tarmac. That's the prime mission equipment, the cost of that there is what we call flyaway cost. Then you also have to have support items. So to get the weapon system cost, you add the support item costs to the flyaway cost. So what are those support items? That would be things like your test stands, all of your maintenance gear that you have that goes along with that. If you have anything like uh, you know, generators that you have to have to start a, an aircraft up or something like that, then that would be a support item. Any of your training devices, that kind of thing. All of those go into that bucket of support items there. And all of that together, if you saw the weapon system sitting there, then with all of its support equipment around it, then that would be the weapon system cost, everything that goes into that weapon system cost. And then to finish off procurement costs, you also have to buy your initial set of spares, which is also bought with the procurement appropriation with that color of money. So that's, that's all your procurement costs there. Now, another cost that we have to think about here is construction. Do you have to construct any type of facility in order to support the system? Uh, could be hangars, could be maintenance bays, things like that. Uh, if you do, then the appropriate type of money there is military construction or MILCON. That's the appropriation that you would use for any major construction that you have to do as part of uh, buying your overall system. Now to get another type of cost that we talk about, the program acquisition cost, you put all of those things together. Let me just do a little adjustment here. So your RDT&E cost, development cost there, anything for military construction, and your procurement costs, put all of those together, and that is what we call our program acquisition costs. So it's the total cost of acquiring that program. Now, we also have a couple of other things that go into the total life cycle cost here that we have to consider. First here is operating and support costs, and these tend to be, quite frankly, the majority of the life cycle cost of the system because we're often operating and supporting a system for 20, 30, 40 years. So this tends to get very expensive. So those costs include all of your operations and maintenance costs, things like parts, things like fuel, that kind of thing to run the system, the maintenance of the system. And then there's also the very expensive MILPERS, which is all the costs basically of salaries of your DOD personnel, uniformed and not, that work on the system. And then lastly, uh, we're going to have to pay to dispose of the system as well. So disposal costs are usually of the O&M appropriation. Uh, so normally that's what we're going to have to pay out of to do our disposal. You put all of this together now, all of those different cost types, and add those up and that will give you your total life cycle costs. So you can see what each of these now is composed of. And you can find this information on your financial management platinum card as well. This similar diagram is on that card.
Now let's take a look at these different colors of money, the different appropriations, the RDT&E, the procurement, uh, the O&M and the MILPERS here, and the military construction. And let's see where we would expect to spend that color of money or appropriation of money across the life cycle. First of all, we're going to start off mainly with research, development, test, and evaluation because that's the appropriation of money that we use to do those things that are named right in the name of the appropriation. We're going to do research, we're going to do development, engineering, testing, those kinds of things to develop our system with RDT&E. So that's going to continue all the way out here through some of our testing here in production and deployment. Remember, we've got to do that big final exam from the test and evaluation lessons that you've had that gives us our permission to go into full rate production. So we would expect to see RDT&E all the way out through our initial operational test and evaluation or IOT&E right before that full rate production decision review. Procurement is going to start right here usually at milestone C unless we've got uh, an exception to the rule possibly and have some uh, money that we have to spend in engineering and manufacturing development for long lead items. But generally speaking, it's going to start at milestone C and it's going to continue all the way through our production and deployment until uh, we have bought all of our systems there. So procurement tends to be mostly here in production and deployment. And then military construction could be, you know, it could be a lot of different places, but typically where we see it is out here in production and deployment also because we are spending money to build facilities so that we can deploy the system. Operations and maintenance, as soon as we start fielding, then we probably ought to start with the O&M appropriation. And it's going to go out through the rest of the life cycle of the system. If this were built to scale, it would go about 20 feet that way, probably. Because, remember, we're going to spend most of our life cycle out here in operations and support. So we also have to have MILPERS here for our deployed systems. We've got to support those with soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, and DOD civilians. Uh, so we've got to have that MILPERS money out there as well. This is about where you see most of these appropriations used. But the important thing is to know what is the purpose of the money. That's getting the, the appropriation right. So that's the right color of money. You also have, it, have to have it in the right year. So each of these appropriations is only able to be obligated for a certain number of years, and that's also found on your platinum card if you want to look that up. Uh, so you have to have the money in the right years for when the effort is, is being done. And then you have to have the right amount. You can't be deficient, you know, violate that Anti-Deficiency Act. So if you think color, year, and amount, if you've got the right color of money, you've got it in the right year, and you've got enough of it, uh, then you'll be in good shape uh, financially. So this was a walkthrough here of the different parts of the life cycle cost composition and the different cost types that go into this. I hope that uh, has cleared some things up for you, and thanks for tuning in.